Are you worried that you're going to be banned from Pinterest? Wondering how can you protect yourself from being flagged as spam or having your account deactivated on Pinterest? There's so much talk of accounts being blocked, deleted, flagged for spam, traffic falling. All of this is going on on Pinterest. So I know you might be scared. We're all a little bit scared and on edge and wondering, am I pinning the right way? Am I breaking the rules? What are the community guidelines and how can I follow them? So hey all, this is Natalie Bardo. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you seven ways that you can avoid being banned from Pinterest or even blocked. We don't want your domain to be blocked. So if you love Pinterest tips, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I'm more than happy to be your Pinterest coach. So back to that question, do you want to avoid being blocked or banned from Pinterest? I should preface this video by saying that even if you do follow all of these seven rules I'll be sharing with you, there is no guarantee that your account will not be flagged or that you won't be blocked because sometimes it happens by accident. Pinterest is routinely removing spammy accounts and sometimes good accounts just get caught up in all of that kerfuffle. And a lot of the times when accounts are actually blocked or banned for going against Pinterest community guidelines, there never is a real explanation as to why that happens. I myself have had my URL blocked and it was because of a mass delete and they cleared it up. But I just want to share with you seven of the top mistakes that I see a lot on Pinterest. So if you want to stay in the safe zone and out of Pinterest jail, you definitely want to watch this video. So the first mistake and the thing that you want to avoid doing to not get blocked on Pinterest is do not keep pinning the same pin over and over again. Okay? So if you're reading any old blog posts from like 2017, 2018, telling you how to grow your Pinterest account, do not listen to them when they say to take your one pin and save it to every board and group board that you belong to. That is the highway to Pinterest jail. All right, do not do that. Do not save the same pin over and over again. Instead, you're gonna pin it to the best high quality board that you have and maybe, maybe, like, and this is a huge maybe, you can pin it a few more times to relevant boards, but I would not do that immediately. Make sure you have at least seven days, if not a few weeks between those repins. You're going to rely on something like Pinterest SEO to do the work for you. I've got a whole video about that that you can check out. Next thing is don't use Pinterest like it's a social media site. Pinterest is not Instagram. Pinterest is not Twitter or TikTok. It is its own thing. That means that the behaviors that you might be able to get away with on Instagram or Twitter, you will not get away with them on Pinterest. Do not follow and unfollow. Mm -hmm. Do not use hashtags. I got a whole video on that as to why hashtags are no longer relevant on Pinterest. Do not just share your images that you created on Instagram onto the Pinterest platform. It's not the best size. So Pinterest is not a social media site. It is a search engine. So do not use it as if you're using TikTok, all right? So that doesn't mean that you can't share your TikTok videos on the platform. I simply mean don't follow unfollow. These are behaviors that are going to get you flagged as a spammer and kicked off. So do not also message people constantly. Do not message people links. These are the behaviors that are reportable because what happens is you can report anyone for spammy behavior. So you don't want anyone to flag you and put you on a Pinterest radar to get you kicked off the platform. So I also wanna remind you that the best optimal size for a Pinterest pin are those two by three ratio longer images. Not these images that you would create for Instagram, but those longer pins. 
All right, let's move on to the third thing that you should avoid if you don't want to get blocked or banned from Pinterest. Doing too much at once. All right, so Pinterest must have these safeguards in place anytime you do too much at once. And it happens a lot to new accounts. So especially if you just started a new account on Pinterest, you don't want to hop in and save all of these pins at once, create all of these boards at once, or even doing things like commenting on other people's images, like thinking as a strategy for you to gain followers. You don't wanna do that on Pinterest. Also, you should know that Pinterest actually removes inactive or dead accounts. So if you create an account and you're not actually using it, you're actually in danger of losing that account because they're always pruning the platform. So make sure that you pace yourself. That's why consistency is one of those things that are key to growth on Pinterest. I've got a whole video that teaches you all about that. So if you're just starting out, you don't wanna pin a hundred pins in one day. You wanna pace yourself, whether that's five, 10 pins a day, whatever is doable for you. If you still have group boards and you're adding people, and this is something, I have some high quality group boards that I maintain. I don't sit there and add like 200 people in one day because I know that that could set off some alarms on Pinterest that my behavior is spammy or bot-like. You don't want to act like a bot because that's one of the biggest problems that the platform has. With these spam accounts that are stealing pins and doing a lot at once, that sets off these alarms. So you want to make sure that whatever you're doing on the platform is paced, is consistent, and just don't overdo it at once. You can set off some red flags that can get you banned or blocked. So the fourth mistake that I see a lot of people making and that can get you flagged is using a platform in conjunction to Pinterest that is not a certified partner. You want to make sure that you're only using approved partners like Canva, like Tailwind. Pinterest actually has an entire list of their Pinterest partners. So no matter what you're doing, whether you're looking for a tool for better advertising, content creation, maybe measurement or shopping, they have all these different lists of the types of partners they have, you're gonna wanna make sure that that partner, like Tailwind is listed first, is on this list. So if you're scheduling pins, use Tailwind. Don't use some random website that nobody's heard about and that is not prefer not a preferred partner because you will get in trouble like that you'll get in trouble so be sure anything you're using in conjunction to pinterest is on this list of preferred partners they should say that they're a preferred partner or you can hop on this site and check that they're listed here i'm going to put the list down below so you can make sure whoever you're using is a preferred partner so just a reminder that tailwind is a preferred partner Canva is a preferred partner. Buffer and Later are also preferred partners. So stay in the safe zone. Don't get banned or blocked by using some rando third-party scheduler that is cheap or free. It ain't worth it risking your Pinterest profile. Okay, so the fifth mistake, and this is a major thing you want to avoid when pinning on Pinterest, adding the wrong links. All right, so listen here. Number one, Avoid redirections. Pinterest does not like when you link to a page that redirects to another website. So that means also for your affiliate links, you're probably going to want to just paste in that direct to whatever product you're promoting. Don't, you know, link to a bit.ly link that goes to amazon.com. Just link to amazon.com. So avoid redirections. You also do not want to link to Pinterest itself. Don't link to your Pinterest profile. Pinterest does not like that. It's a big red flag. Also, you don't want to link to any spammy or questionable sites. Personally, to me, that includes not putting links to things like Tumblr. A lot of Tumblr sites just contain stolen images and it's just not a good look. So you want to make sure that if you're doing any repins from, say, a Tailwind community, for example, that you click on that link first and you just make sure it's a high quality website, that the pin is an accurate representation of the page that it links to. 
You also want to avoid just sharing endless pins to the same URL. So whether that's your Etsy store or your YouTube channel or your Instagram, do not just keep posting links to the same page. You need to diversify your links. I would not link to the same, like by say you're scheduling pins, do not link multiple times within the same week to the same page. You need to diversify your links and stay in that safe zone. So that's another tip to help you avoid getting blocked or banned on Pinterest. So number six is stealing pins and images. You definitely want to avoid at all costs stealing images. That includes from other users, stealing images from Google. Yeah, don't just go to Google and search for self-care images or woman working and using those images in your content. That's a big no-no and a quick way for you to end up in Pinterest jail. Three strikes and you are off of the platform, okay? So you wanna make sure that always you're using those high quality stock images, whether you're purchasing them from a reputable stock site or you're making sure that they're your own photography. So just stay in that safe zone because I have found so many pins that are stolen from me and you best believe that I am going to report you. And if you get kicked off, that's your problem, not mine. That's an important thing to remember about Pinterest is that Pinterest actually protects the user's copyright. So if I create an image and I post it, I'm retaining my copyright. Unlike something like Instagram or TikTok, where if you post an image on their platform, you give up all your copyright. You can't then complain that somebody shared the image. It doesn't work like that on Pinterest, okay? So no stealing images, create your own. There's no excuse using something like Canva to design your Pinterest pins or even Tailwind Create. There are stock photos built in to that platform that you can use, or hey, you've got a phone. Most phones have amazing cameras. You can take your own images. And number seven, you want to make sure that you are not breaking the Pinterest creator's code. This is something that they just released to ensure that Pinterest remains an inclusive, positive, and inspiring place. So you want to make sure that you are not breaking any of the rules that they have set for their content creators. Okay, so here's a look at the creator code. I'm going to put a link down below. Once you post a story pin, which recently went wide, so if you're outside the US, you should be able to create story pins or at least request to be able to use the feature. And when you do so, you're going to get this prompt that says you've got to sign the creator code. It means that you agree that you will be kind. Don't be a jerk. Like, don't be aggressive in comments or replies and make sure you check your facts. Misinformation is a huge problem. They wanna make sure Pinterest is not a place like that and just be aware of triggers. So don't trigger someone. Don't post things that are violent or that can send somebody into a spiral. Be positive, be inspiring and be kind. So you can check out the rules for that. I'll post the link down below. You wanna make sure that you stay compliant. And speaking of rules, you wanna make sure that you are also following Pinterest community guidelines and best practices. I'm gonna post some links for you to review down below, but honestly, some of this is common sense. You're not gonna post explicit content, for example. You're not gonna post lies. You're not gonna post things that are destructive in nature. So just make sure you follow the rules and that I just wanna read one line to you because I do believe that if we keep this in mind, we can stay out of a lot of the hot water that a lot of content creators have been getting in with Pinterest these days. This is the community guidelines page. If you've never seen it, well, this is the first time. I encourage you to read it. So obviously you wanna avoid adult and explicit content. Pinterest is not the place for that, all right? Anything that is hateful, discriminatory, misinformation, big no, no, that includes health information, anything that is harassing and criticizing, anything that shares anyone's private information, I encourage you all to read this yourself. And there is one particular part that I just want to iterate to you. And it's right here. To prevent inauthentic content and behavior, make sure you're posting relevant content to relevant boards. And that goes back to my first tip about repinning. You don't want to do that too much. 
Keep the content of your posts high quality and avoid spammy behavior. Save content you have an authentic interest in. That means if you are a personal development blogger, you should be posting pins that are relevant to that topic. If you're a finance blogger or a fashionista, stay within your topic, be authentic. So I really hope that those seven things that you should not be doing on Pinterest to avoid being flagged as a spammer, your domain being blocked or your account being deleted altogether helps you to just feel a little bit more confident in your pinning and to like take a little bit of the stress off. Once again, I cannot guarantee that there are other things that you could be doing that could get you flagged as spam. But I do think that these are seven rules that you should always keep in mind. Do not do any of these things. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I've got new pin Pinterest videos coming your way each and every week. So hey all, I'm Natalie Bardo. So happy to be your Pinterest coach and be sure to click up there to check out the next video. You're going to find it helpful.